Um, I have two questions possibly related. Um, so once you have the, the shock of awakening, um, what role, if any, is there of a guru or a guide, internal or external? And the second question is, um, once there is a, an awakening and the associated shock, it's not the awakening is perhaps not fully established, but there has been a definite awakening or you know a minor awakening or whatever it is. What can one do because you know it's still you the next awakening or it's still you fully realized whatever it is. But what you know is is it then again up to the master or in terms of self effort or whatever it is? But what can one really do because, as you say, all those things are crumbling or certain things are happening, but you, you, are, you are sure that something has happened, but uh, you also know that the full thing has not happened either. Mm -hmm. So in other words, your question is, what is the role of perceptor? And what is the role of our self-effort? So I just want to make clear. Sure. So where do we draw the distinction? Where can we rely on our own devices, so to speak, right? versus of where do we... Because um, I want to understand exactly yeah, so, where you come. Because many yes. people, it's a very important yeah, question, yeah. and I know many, many spiritual seekers out there today, in the West there is this anti-guru uh, bug. Sure. Because the democracy, all this like, you know, maybe because many gurus misuse their roles and played with the concepts and what have you, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It is hard for the Westerner, it doesn't matter. When we say Western, it could be a Japanese working in the West or Indian working in the West. Yeah. Whenever we are affected by Western civilization, Western cultures and values inherent in this culture in the case of present time, it is very hard to accept, accept the role of a guru in this process. Because with that, with that, the very question of our personal freedom is being put at stake. What at stake is this whole notion of democracy, right? I often say is that how free are you in the first place to be afraid of yeah, sure. renouncing your freedom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you free? If you're free, then I'm more than happy for you. You don't need any guru. Yeah. But you need to be free, free, right? Before declaring that somebody can infringe your freedom. Nobody can take away your freedom when you're free. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah, sure. So this is, I'm just elaborating on your question yeah. so that there is a great understanding where your question comes from. Yeah. On the other hand, there is this new tendency which is being regurgitated over and over that guru within and guru, guru within and guru without is the same guru when who cares about the guru without? I would much prefer to have guru within when I don't need guru without. Yeah, Facebook, <laughs> cyber gurus are like all over the place these days. Um, yeah, I mean, so that that is right. The you know self-effort versus perception, etc. It's just, um, I guess the the question is yes, you know there is a shock for you know physiologically, etc. There is a profound change taking place, and it's almost you know as simply as you know what uh, because if you have the the grace or the luck or whatever it is that you do have an external guru and you have also the luck to you know to uh, accept that you know his word etc then you have that but if you or if you have enough tejas or whatever it is and you are established enough that you don't need an external and you know you are able to continue on your own i accept that too but it, i is any of that in your control I mean, at, at one level, yes, it is, but, you know, I don't know. It may, you know, you may have an awakening, as you said, with some of these people who have an awakening, they have a shock. But for many years, they are in limbo. Mm -hmm. So is, is there anything that can be done? I mean, I know that's the theme of your <laughs> Sure, sure. No, I, I yes, it's it, it's an interesting question, and, like... Let me try to give it a shot at it, okay? <clears throat> if 
first and furthermore important is to realize and to understand and have as clear idea as possible is that relationship between the perceptor and spiritual aspirant or someone who assumes that role is beyond <coughs> beyond anything that can be conceived by language. I'm giving you very, very intimate, very personal understanding of that relationship. I'm not now speaking in terms of what Guru is, what Guru is not. I can give you the whole Guru Gita verses and you know, all what Guru is. You know, that's not the point. Your question is very individual, very personal, come directly from your heart, and I'm speaking from my heart. That that relationship can never be scrutinized through any logical understanding. It goes beyond. It belongs to the beyond. It is a very intimate affair. It is more intimate than any other relationship you will ever have. And I'm choosing my words very carefully here. It's more intimate than a relationship with your beloved, whoever that beloved is. It is more intimate than your relationship with your children. It is more intimate with any of your friends. It's simply a relationship on a level of the self and the self. So, once this is understood, one is free of any misconceptions of what Guru is and what Guru is not. What Guru can do for you and what Guru cannot do for you. And how you choose to surrender to the Guru. Okay? Indian tradition is rich in the relationships of that kind. You know? You can have Guru as your child, right? It's very, very much baby Krishna, you know, the adoring that beautiful ball of light, that beautiful expression of consciousness in that. It's the mother mothering your guru, you know, mothering your guru. You can have relationship with your guru as, on, you know, in reverse, as you are eternal child, and you surrendering to that as the mother, you know, to that very, very motherly aspect. It could be your friend, you know, the, someone who you, to whom you can confine at any time. You know, friend is not necessarily cheating or chatting, chit chatting on the phone. Uh, the, the, the stronger is the friendship, the less there's need to talk. You know, the, the, the more, the deeper the connection, the less there is a need for external reconfirmation of that act. You know, it all happens on this level, on the level of the heart. So to me, once this is lived and understood, the question falls out on its own. The question just is no longer there. The questions of guru, no guru, I don't need guru, I need a guru, is only on the level before we fully understood that. Before we're still swimming in this kind of, you know, like, oh, my, all gurus are charlatans, or like, you know, or, or, why do I need a guru? The truth is only within, so it's a waste of time. Yes. It's all dialogue, it all belongs to the mind, it all belongs to the you know, mind always rationalizes. It's, it's always trying to find the deal. Yeah, you come to the market, you came to the you know, supermarket, you came to the department store, it's sales. So you calculate. This, okay, if I, you know, yeah. So you try to get a better deal. With Guru, it doesn't work like that. You know, with Guru, your surrender is total, complete and irreversible. And there's beauty in it. Because when that happens, you roll on the floor, you know, you roll on the floor in self-purificatory acts of ecstatic, you know, whatever that is. Because what you realize is that, that that is your own truth. And that whoever you considered or put in a place, in a position of being a guru, only helped you in that moment, in that moment of recognition, that moment of truth. And that is sacred. How can that, that ever be put into language? We can only try. And this is why I deeply believe, you know, like, uh, you can do it without a guru, fine. But, you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. it's, it, it's that very, you know, and yeah, that goes back to that, you know, the democracy. What do we understand by that, you know? What are we here to lose, you know? We always like bargain, there's the bargain. You know, but up until there's a bargain, there's no real relationship. With the perceptor, you know, there is, this is for that reason in Indian tradition, Gu stands for that which conceals, Ru stands for that which reveals. So Guru is not something or someone, it's the universal principle. 
it's the breath of Shiva, it's the breath of consciousness itself, you know, expresses itself through everything. Yeah, but if, you, if that is not understood, there is always fear, there is always limitations, there is always this kind of like, there is always bargains are made, you know, but, yeah. But I guess to the extent that that is understood, then one is fully realized, or to the extent that that is not fully under, realized or appreciated, then you are still always bargaining, even if it's a subtler bargain or whatever it is. Yeah, up until it's a bargain, it's a bargain. But as I said, when there is no, when there is a full understanding, there is no bargain. Who is bargaining with what? The, the true surrender, the true surrender, is the internal act. I think women will understand that. You know, woman in love, when she surrenders to her beloved, that is it, you know? She recognizes in that man, in that partner, right, whoever that partner is, she recognizes her beloved. You know, that surrender is complete. She knows that that's what it is. What bargain is there? Up until before that, it's bargain. But when it happens, there's no bargain. So, but what you said earlier in your question, I just want to touch up on a very important factor. But energetically speaking, and here is what Tantra is rich in as a tradition, energetically speaking, that relationship, because it happens on the level of consciousness, right? It's like literally plugging in. Once you plugged in to something, that is working at all times. Because energy, it's the very nature of consciousness. We talked about it earlier in terms of the awareness. Whenever your awareness goes somewhere, it enlivens that. This is why a guru will tell you, when you think of me, I will think of you a thousand times more. You know, like they say, you think of God, God will think of you a thousand times more in some religions. In the same way here, because of that principle is being enlivened. And this is what the transmission is. Spiritual knowledge is not transmitted through intellectual, you know. Mm. It transmits through the gaps between the spoken and unspoken. It transmits through that which has no name and no form. And that is a true relationship. So when that is realized, the relationship becomes very rich, very rich, very actual, very, you know, very self-encompassing. It's physical, it's emotional. When I say physical, it means that you are experiencing it through the cells of, of, your, of your being, you know? A mere mentioning of that being who is deeply connected to you can send a particular vibrations through your body, which are very fine, you know? So this is, you know, my personal view on this, you know? And if it's old-fashioned, if it's whatever, but this is how I came to realize my own self, and the truth, you know, through that act of surrender, through that act of complete devotion and love that was in beyond me, as you said, is it up to me, you know? No, it was not up to me. I fought until the very end. I fought until the very end. I didn't want to, because I wanted to be in control. I wanted to remain in control. But when all that crumbled down, you know, it was a different story. Thank you.